everybody, David Gordon from Theater Mania here with uh, Broadway's Montego Glover, Tony nominee for Memphis, recent star of Hamilton uh, <laughs> in Chicago, right? Yes, that's right. You are doing all the Natalie Portmans at MCC when the theater shutdown happened. I was doing all the Natalie Portmans at MCC. I was. How was that? How was that experience? I love that play. Oh my gosh, the play is terrific. The experience was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those things, you know, it's a new play. So like uh, we had like all this new energy in the room and all these new right. people and this story to tell that had never been told before in this way. So it was very like electric, electric, mm -hmm. you know? Playwright was happy to be there. We're happy to be there. Kate, the director, yeah. MCC's thrilled about the project. It was awesome. Yeah, I was hoping that uh, it would get taped. But... Uh, me too, me too. You know, we were we were such a good ways into our run. We were about yeah. to start our extension. So uh -huh. I doubt that we were probably on our way to some other capture of the show. I am glad though that we got to do like a full opening and production photos and all that stuff because there are, those are memories we get to hold on to in that way. You yeah, know? so you, you guys played a more or less full run as yep. opposed to a lot of other shows that were happening at oh my yeah. god we're so lucky honestly like we got to rehearse and develop and pre yeah. and open it's a real gift it really was yeah how are you holding up how are you doing are you you're in new york city i'm in new york city i'm holding up really well really well you know actors stay busy we know how to we know how to scroll around and do all yeah kinds of so yeah i'm doing great yeah um, just staying in touch with everybody, checking up on people and letting them check up on me. That's a big one. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's easy to sort of retreat. And it's like, actually, open up a little bit so we can all get a hold of you, you know? Yeah, that's good. And family, family is good. Family is okay. Family's good. Family's okay. I'm so happy to say that. Really, Not really. Hard. I know, right? Oh, geez. You know, so we're keeping tabs. Almost yeah. to be honest. Anyway, the gist of this for the people watching at home is that that's the only bit of current world events I want to talk about because I hate everything that's going on in the news and I just want to get my mind off it for the next 28 minutes. That sounds so good. Let's all take a break. You can only take so much, honestly. Yeah. So much, you know? Yeah. So uh, for this, I've given the people that I'm talking to uh, the directive of thinking about subjects they want to talk about. I know everybody's cleaning and I know Montego, you found some like Broadway tchotchkes and knickknacks in your house. Yeah, I got like, I was, you know, there are things that are in my home that I enjoy and I love and I put there for a reason, but you know, you don't always stop and visit those things every single day. They're there because they mean a lot to you, but you don't like visit them every single day. And so yeah. as you know, spending more and much welcome time in my home, I came across <laughs> Things. Can I share? Please show me. Can I share? Okay. So I don't know how many of you know this, but my first Broadway show was the Color Purple original company. Yes. Right? A original production. And I joined the company as a standby mm -hmm. for Steely and for Nettie. Now, if you have ever been an understudy or gone to the theater and opened up your playbill and that little paper slips out, you know, if you're an actor, ta da, tonight you get me, right? <laughs> Look what I found. Da, 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 da. Can you see that? Oh, you have it mounted and framed. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Because it was my first Broadway show and it was so special to me. So I put it in there, but then I didn't forget. Let's not say, David, that I forgot, but like this is sitting like in a spot in my home. And I was like, oh, look at that. I just yeah. stopped to read it the other day. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I remember. And then, of course, it you know, made me remember like the first time I went on. Yeah, tell me about the first time you went on as Celia in the Color Purple, because that's a <laughs> that's a titanic role. That role is insane. Yeah, yeah. It was very, it was like so, uh, mm. it was real. And the thing that you're preparing for because you are the standby, do you know what I mean? Right. And he's the centerpiece, she's the heartbeat of the show. All this wonderful stuff goes on and these not so wonderful things go on around her. Um, I remember it was a late announcement mm -hmm. um, and it had to be done over the sound system. Oh, wow. And I know, I know. And uh, when my name was called, um, people, there were people in the audience that were like, 
Boom. Seriously, that that actually happens. <laughs> Not happy. Not happy. Which happens, you know? Which right. happens. Which happens. Um, and I remember thinking, wow, wow, I wasn't ready for that at all. <laughs> yeah, was, that probably throws you off your game. Well, it, I was like, wow. And you know, I have to say my company heard it and came flying to my side. And they're like, are you okay? Are you okay? Unbelievable. Just can't believe it. Are you okay? Are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm good. Do you guys trust me? And I remember saying this, do you guys trust me? Do you trust me to just do this work? I've worked so hard. They're like, of course we do. Mm. The curtain went up, we did the play. And at the end, everybody was on their feet and everybody was singing and everybody was clapping, including the Boers. So, you, won, you won them over. <laughs> I would like to think, unless they escaped, you know what I mean, before we could lay eyes on them. Um, I, I have to say, I feel like the strength of that piece and just the beautiful storytelling, starting with like Alice's writing and yeah. then all the work by, done by the creators on that show. I and love she, that show. It, I think it's beautiful. It just it draws you in. And so I appreciated the opportunity to just be present and be honest because there was nothing to do. If someone's here's your name and they boo, you know, and I didn't right. take it personally. That's the thing. I didn't take yeah. it personally. Like Montego Glover, oh, I know her from, you know, some, you know, right. something. It wasn't <laughs> <laughs> they were just like, you're, who are you? Who are you? Yeah. And it was my first Broadway show. I was like, I'm, I'm here doing my job, you know? Yeah. So it was, it was exciting. It was exciting. So what's your favorite memory from doing The Color Purple? Ah. Uh, I think the second part of the first time I went on mm -hmm. is my favorite memory. Um, so when I went on for the first time, I thought, you know, this is my first show on, on the Broadway. I'm going on for this huge role for the first time. Maybe the first right. time I should just do, I should not tell anyone. I shouldn't call my family. I shouldn't call anybody. Just do it, you know, in case you just crash, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that stayed in my brain for about two minutes. And then something happened. And the voice inside me said, Montego, you have worked this hard. You have come this far. Mm. Why on earth would you not share? Of course. Right. Whether it's good, bad, or ugly, like what is the, what are you holding on to? Yeah. So then I called everybody. <laughs> everybody. Grandma, like literally grandma, aunties, uncles, family from all over the country. I'm born and raised in the South. So they were just coming up. You know what I mean? Just flooding and the Broadway theater. <laughs> It's at the Broadway. I called everyone, everyone, everyone. Um, and I have to say, when we got to Bows, and I felt like I had, you know, taken the step forward and, and at least allowed myself to be used by that piece, mm -hmm. I came out for a final bow. Oh, my God, I could cry. The sound of the applause. Oh. I knew they were all out there. It was special. Yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite one. Just and I... I had I just gave myself permission to invite everyone. Of course, and thank you for crying on the spot perfectly. <laughs> ah, it should it honestly should not make me cry at this point. It's been that long, but for hey, it's an emotion. It's an emotional thing. <laughs> All right, what else, what else, what else you got? Okay, then then speaking of color purple, I came across this, huh? I came across this. This is a notepad. Oh, I remember those. From the show. And yeah. I was sitting down like, check out this date, all of it. I was like, what? How did I get this? How did I have this? But like, there I was. And I was actually, um, shortly after we became uh, sheltered in, in the city, mm -hmm. I was writing notes um, for something and pulled out a pad of paper and was like, oh my gosh, look at this, I have this. So it was one of those little, <laughs> those little finds that I was like, I know I have it, but I, Almost forgot I had it, and then <laughs> there it was. And I was like, "Oh!" And I still have it all this time. You know what I mean? That's handy. You got to save. You can write on it, but you got to save one of them, and you got to like frame it alongside the other. <laughs> Just like a, a yeah. Sip. <laughs> a sip. Uh, folks at home watching, if you have questions, type them in the comments, and they will come through, and we can ask them. Yeah, I'd love yeah. it. I'd what love else? It. You got? Okay, so does anybody remember, David, do you remember a little show that I worked on called It Should Have Been You? My wife's favorite show. Look I love this. that show. <laughs> I found this notepad from the show. Look at all of us. I mean, just in that great line that like yeah. the show with. 
I was so delighted to see this. I just stumbled across it. I was like, oh my gosh, again, writing notes. You know what I mean? It's like a little note to slip in the envelope or to slip in the little thing. Yeah. Whatever. And like, I'm so thrilled I have it and I've kept it. I mean, we've been, you know, away from the show for almost Four, four, four or five years now. At this I know. Point. It feels like it was just yesterday, too. I know. And we had so much fun. I mean, it looks like you guys are having a blast doing it. I'm surprised that I'm surprised that I don't get more emails saying about like regional and community theater productions because that it's like the perfect show. You know, whatever happened, like the Broadway run is the Broadway run, but you know, all of these things live on and it just yeah, it really is, like, the perfect show. They really do. And it's so much fun. Like we were having such a blast and I feel like any a note or fan mail that I've gotten from anyone that said, hey, we're actually doing a production of this. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to like surprise everybody. And I'm so excited to, you know, to yeah. have th this experience because it looked like you guys were having such a good time with it. That so. was a, uh, that was a cast full of scene stealers. <laughs> also known as an ensemble cast. Yeah. Um, what, <laughs> um, exactly. What, uh, what is your favorite memory of just cracking up with Harriet and Edward Hibbert and David Hyde Pierce and all of those guys? Like, let's, let's just start by saying David Hyde Pierce. Let's start there because like the man is a genius, really a genius and a very fine director. Like really, like not only, not only does he get it, he gets how to get it out of you. He gets, yeah. how to, you know, lay it out so that you just, you know, you literally, the door opens and you walk right through. Yeah. Um, in, in rehearsals, David would just lay us out with the funniest, you know, one-liners. I mean, so many I can't even really quote. Would like just I just remember all of us like erupting in laughter, or like you know, like it start out as like a little like sniggle, and then we can't hold on, and then yes, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, I remember thinking specifically in the show. Mm. Um, there's a scene where Harriet's character and Tyne's character are at the beauty salon, and the three of us girls. Right, right. I remember thinking, this is a masterclass in how it's done. Like mm -hmm. how to tell story, but also how to just lay out the comedy, to play your intention in a scene, to work in the mm -hmm. music. And I thought, I'm getting paid to sit here and take a class. <laughs> <laughs> My job is to be in the scene, which I'm happy to do, but like I'm getting an amazing education. And of course I'm sitting there with Sierra and Lisa yeah. Five of us women are just having a blast, but those are some of my favorite. And like, you know, just, just all I had to do is be present. Just stay, yeah. stay with them and watch we're doing a We're doing a rewatch of Frasier now. <laughs> Gold. It's like from, from start to finish and we're in the middle of season four and it's uh, DHP and Harriet Harris. And it's just like all of these just scene stealers in a row. Gems, every single yeah. one. Every single one. And I have to say, like, I remember our first read as a company mm -hmm. um, and thinking and, and sitting around the table and going, my God, you know, what I mean, like the wealth of just like experience, but also real, you know, um, what's that word? Ah, yeah. Seems, <laughs> seems yeah. 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 Uh, we have a question from Diana. What two songs that you've performed in a show have you found the most empowering for you? What, two songs? Yeah, they don't have to be from the same show. Mm -hmm. What are the songs that you perform that you find most empowering? Mm. Um, I would say probably one of those for sure is Colored Woman from Memphis. It's mm -hmm. just, it just, that song continues to open up for me. Um, and I, I honestly can't count how many times I've sung it at this point. Uh -huh. sure it's celebrated like 10 years in October just last year. So That's crazy, I, I, can't, I, I can't believe. Memphis has been alive and in the world for 10 years. That takes how long I've been doing this job too, because I came up, I was starting right when Memphis was opening. Oh, that's why. See, you're yeah. taking with this David. We've grown up together. We have. I have photos, <laughs> I was just going through them today of, there was this, you know, all of these Broadway shows do like silly photo ops every now and then. It's either a cake for a hundredth performance or <laughs> you know, a, a cocktail is named for your show at some restaurant. And I have, I'm just, I was just looking at photos of you and Adam Pascal at, I think it was B Smith's. Yep. There was like a Memphis cocktail that was happening. I know it. I'm so much and so much. I'm working on this thing I'm calling like the Memphis archives and I'm just going to like have a, you get like a virtual tour and you just w walk through <laughs> all of there's so much. I did not realize it, but you know. Have, have you watched the movie? Sorry? Have you watched the movie, the film version? 
let me tell you this. I have seen, I saw it when we premiered it mm -hmm. and I've seen it in bits and pieces since. I have the hardest time watching myself do that work in the theater. Like I, I made her for the theater. When I watch myself on camera and TV and film, it's one thing, but for some reason I'm like, oh, I'm delighted to see every other single person on the stage. Yeah. But I've seen it, I've seen it, but I've seen it like in totality, one right. time through, and then in bits and pieces. So yeah. I am ready now to sit down and just like give myself a viewing of Memphis. It's probably on Broadway HD or something, somewhere. Yeah. Probably HD. I, um, I get word back all the time. Somebody has seen it or discovered it on there, and they send me a note um, on any one of the platforms to say, "Yeah," that, which is always really, really sweet. I love that. I just appreciate so much that people um, receive it and still want to like share that they enjoyed it. We worked really hard, so we appreciate that. I certainly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Diana wants to know what. So besides colored women, number yes. two. The other one that comes to mind like right away, mm -hmm. I have to say, is. Um, early in my career, I got to play the role of Aida. And mm. Dance of the Robe is like crazy awesome. There's something about the the movement of that song mm. and part in it that and it's the it's really the back half, but yeah. it just takes off like a rocket and it's very empowering. Like I just felt like earth moving and like this woman pulling together her tribe and being like, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it, and we're going. Yeah. Uh, what else have you found? What else have you found in your your archive? Show me, show and tell. All right. Um, so, at first glance, you go, sure, a DVD of Memphis. And then you look closer and you see words that you may not understand. And then you look closer and you see currency you may not understand. Yeah. And then you turn it over. And I was like, when did I get this? <laughs> where, where, how, like how? I was like, I don't know, David, this is what I'm telling you. This this is why the discovery, like I'm sure it was, I, I'm sure it was a gift. And <laughs> I'm sure that it was like part of a, you know, a collection and I'm looking to, yes, yes. Like the, our names, the cast, the staff are all written in like both languages. It's just the most, it's the most incredible thing. And I thought, I mean, like tiny stickers with, you know, yeah. fine print and disclaimers of all sorts. Yeah. And there's all the kids, we're all in there. Isn't that something? I wonder if it's dubbed. I know, and here's what's crazy. Do you see that it's not been opened at all? Like I haven't yeah. even, I haven't even taken the adventure <laughs> of like what that's the way. That's the way you're gonna watch Memphis now. I know, I think, I'll, I think I'll enjoy actually watching it this way to see yeah. like, what that is. I think too, when I watch it, I might go live for a couple minutes and be like, you guys. Yeah, you, <laughs> should. you definitely should. So yeah, that's one I came across. Just know it, just know it. Amazing. And what, yeah, all that jazz. So good, so good. Um, and then I have one more treasure. Show me. I wanna say, uh, I was gonna share with you. Yes, hang on, let's make sure there's nothing slippy or weird in here. Okay. So hmm. I don't know how many folks out there know this, but I got to work on this, piece of art. Ooh. Bah, bah. It, is, it is our like souvenir book. It is the souvenir book. And in it, I found oh so many. That was the, the new production, right? The new production, yes, right? There she there is. There you are. There she is. I was like, so dear. And let's like, again, I haven't like, I haven't been near the piece in years, in four yeah. or five years, you know what I mean? And there, there she was. I found another one myself and Alfie just in the streets. <laughs> Is that a terribly hard show to do in that role? Yes. Why? I, and not, and I don't mean that in the bad way. I mean, yeah. Yeah, because it's, um, you know, she, first of all, the way Hugo talks about her in the book, the way he describes her and her world and things around her are just so stunning. Like if you mm -hmm. ever need more than what the music already just gives us as an act, as an acting company, gives you as an actor, yeah. you've, got it. you've got it in the novel. Um, the, the challenge with her is making sure that she is as much strong and moving forward mm -hmm. 
as she is so hopeless and very tragic. It's right. really riding the line. It's a knife's edge. And you, I feel like you really um, hold her up. You have her properly in your hands if you can stay right on the knife's edge, right on the knife's edge. And it's mm -hmm. difficult to do. I mean, I have been I mean, singing in a corset that you're actually sewn, <laughs> in, like laced into is yeah. as you're like on the ground and being, you know, kicked and spat on and so on and so forth. Like it's a whole, it requires a kind of, in my opinion, uh, athleticism. Yeah. That you, uh, you know, you have to be okay to do. You have to say, yes, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go off the cliff and dive completely in. How much stage time is it? Uh, let's see. I feel like out of a three hour sojourn, she is present for solidly half. Yeah. If that's if, that's if you do the track, um, that is, you know, where you go away and return to the barricade as right. one, you know, the people of France, which yeah. I did. And oh, I you did. Mm -hmm. And I very much appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and I, I absolutely loved it. I mean, there's something stunning about working on a piece that is not new and people right. come all over the but it's beloved and people love that show. all over the world to see it. I really love that show. Oh, me too. I mean, I loved it before. I grew yeah. up into it. And and then standing inside of it was just surreal. Do you know what I mean? Love that. So, so uh, beautiful. We've yeah. got a comment here that uh, Jennifer saw you as Angelica in Chicago in Hamilton. <laughs> uh, how long did it take you to learn satisfied? Oh, <laughs> satisfied, satisfied. I feel like you never stop learning. Yeah. It. Um, but I think to get that ready, you mean like to, to take thinking about it or to perform it? To perform to, it? Like to learn, to just okay. learn the lyrics with the music. Yeah, lyrics with music, yeah. In rehearsal, Beyond that, figuring out a character. Yeah, right. Uh, that's a solid, for me, to get it like tight the way I like it to be, that was a solid two weeks of like, wow. like run it, run it, run it. Like you just have you, to. Did you like sing with Renee on the album or did you just look at the music and just go go with it that way? A little bit of both actually. <laughs> I was like, how, how, how? I know who has the answer. Renee has the answer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Put her on and listen goes like what how how does she make it there how does she get there what does she do yeah um but a little bit of both and truly what's true about i think angelica and and any of the other roles that i've played and I've, I've had some ones that are really um iconic some of these very iconic women fontaine among them yeah that there the the beauty of it is that the blueprint is there in terms of um, the show having been done already by another actor, actress. Mm -hmm. So it's helpful because it at least gives you a sense that it can be done. But right. what you have to do is decide how this fits on you, like where it really is going to live in your body. For example, with Angelica, I had never rapped before. So I had to figure out where my rap voice was. <laughs> And is you know what I mean like yeah which is that and of course with satisfied not only you're gonna rap but you're gonna stop rapping and then start singing and then start rapping again and then start singing again at an insane volume an insane pace right <laughs> like, not just like my name's Montego and I'm here to say it is not <laughs> that it is not that but we know that it's not yeah that. Can I read? No, uh, it's not. you did that show for what a year six months a year no a year and a half a year and a half mm -hmm. how do you how do you sustain a run that long without going crazy and getting tired of it yeah um i like to keep it really simple first and foremost and i'm so lucky to be able to say this i get to do projects that i really really want to do mm -hmm. it also helps that if you love what you do then you love what you do like i love okay. being an actress i love doing that work so even when the days are hard there's no, there's nothing else i rather be doing do you know totally. what I'm it's that's yeah. that's the beauty um and sustaining that run particularly with shows like hamilton les mis and and others i've worked on that are very uh memphis was very similar yeah. a lot to do um you have to you have to rest you just have to you have to be on a schedule that allows you to rest your instrument needs to rest your voice your body everything needs to rest. so you have to rest you got to warm up you got to cool down you've got to hydrate and you know um uh, what's the word like 
recognize, I say this all the time when I speak to students, like recognize that it's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. it, it's a marathon. It's a, it's a long game situation. Yeah. So not in a hurry. Um, you just need to be able to hold everything that you're responsible for day after day after day. If you can do that, you're winning. Yeah. I'll, I will leave you with one more question. And yes. I know it's a question that a lot of actors uh, aren't a fan of, but Tracy Nichols would like <laughs> to know what do you have, like, what are your future projects? What are you working on beyond stuff that was shut down? Do you have anything coming up? Uh, coming up, whatever coming up means. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that means. Yes. I mean, yes. The answer to the question is yes. The, um, and the thing like most in front of us is a new piece on Netflix. Uh, for Netflix called Inventing Anna, uh, uh -huh. Shonda Rhimes show for Netflix, the cool. first that she has lined up. So I'm really thrilled about that. Um, and we were hoping to land on the network in the fall. We'll have to adjust it just a little bit, just yeah. what's going on around us. But talk about an incredible project. Um, a have you filmed yet? Sorry. You haven't, you haven't yeah. filmed we're in the middle. We're in the middle of the schedule. Uh. Um, so while I was working on Natalie Portman's, I was also on a shooting schedule. Mm -hmm. um, which is not unusual, but requires a bit of planning. Yeah. <laughs> you know what is it about? yeah, sorry. What is it about the uh, show? Anna, so uh, um, a few years ago, you might have read about this. A woman, young woman, arrived in New York um, and sort of presented herself as a baroness, as a very, very wealthy young woman. And she waltzed into the upper crust, the elite of New York social social circles and mm -hmm. had a life like going on the most expensive and amazing vacations like staying in hotels eating the dinners except she had absolutely no money at all and was swindling other people out of their own some of them having a lot of money some of them having none like literally people handing over what little money they had because she was so magnetic and and it was like this life that yeah. that that other people wanted to be about. She called her name Anna. She called herself Anna Delvey, mm -hmm. and this series is about her. Awesome. I know. And uh, who she uh, out there? Maybe we're not there. supposed to talk about this too much, so I'll, we'll leave it there. <laughs> uh, Montego, thank you for for chatting with me for a half hour today. Oh, it's so great. I really appreciate your time. Oh my God, it's my pleasure. Uh, Memphis is on Broadway HD. You can find that there. Uh, you can listen to any number of cast recordings Montego has been on. Yes. Uh, on Spotify, Amazon. Uh, it should have been you as a delight. It is, we had so much fun. Montego, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for doing this so much. Of course. It's nice to see you, David. Hi, guys. You too. Take care. Stay healthy. Yes, you all do that. Stay safe and stay yeah. healthy. I love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>